Hello? Natasha, are you able to hear us? <clears throat> Okay, or oh, the mic was off. I'm saying, are you, are, you able, are you able to hear us or are you able to see the board? What we are writing on the board? Okay, I'm able to hear now. And I think I oh, can okay. see, but, yeah. Like, are you able to see what we are writing? Like, can you see what we, we are trying to write at the board? Yeah, I can see the first thing. Okay. Yeah, so we are trying to revise the questions for yesterday. We are trying to yes, revise those questions. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We are glad to learn that. Okay, you can just follow whenever you have a question, even those guys from online, you can just ask your question. Then I'll, 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 I'll read it in the hearing of everyone so that we, uh, we are okay. You can also be asking questions, right? We're not just teaching those guys who are online and following it. Okay, now we are, we are, we are doing those very questions. We, who is this one? Uh, you guys, even those guys who are online. So we are on question number three of who, the questions that you have at the end of unit number five, I'm told that you are, you, are, you are given to do those questions. So those are the questions that we are revising. So we are on question number three. And the question number three reads, a stock market analyst claims that the average annual return of stock um, in the construction industry is 12%. You're following, right? Are able to follow? Uh -huh. You want to test whether this claim is true. What you do, you collect is some random sample of those 36 stocks in the construction industry. Now, the question is that, can you find the average? Or can you find that the average the annual return is 10? Oh, the, what, 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 are, what are I reading? Oh, the person found that the average annual return is 10%. With the standard deviation of what? 3%. Can you use 5% level of significance to test it, whether the claim is true or false? <laughs> okay. Like you, what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to rephrase this question in a, in a way that you can find it easy to understand. What is there is there is this is stock market analyst, right? What do you believe? This is what is existing, okay? The existing claim. He believes that the annual return, the annual or the average annual return on a stock is what? It's just a 12%, okay? That is what the person believes in. They believe that it is just a 12%. So in this case, the, the, <clears throat> the belief is that see, we have only what? See? We have 12% annual return. And then what you do, you collect it some, what, some sample. You're following, right? Eh? You collect it some sample size of what? Eh? What was the sample size? 36, isn't it? He collected the sample size of 36. After collecting the sample size of 36, he calculated and found that the, the mean, the mean from the sample, what is the mean from the sample? What is the sample mean? 10%. Okay, so the person found what? Eh? 10%. They found that the, they had the 10%. So 10%, 0.10. You know that the 0 0.10 is same as 10%. Yes. And then what is there is this? <clears throat> we need to find the, the mu, right? We need to find the mu. Like the, the average that comes from the existing claim or the average, the mean that you get from the null hypothesis. You remember there is this mu that you get from the null hypothesis, isn't it? What is this mu? What is the mu that you get from the, the null hypothesis? It's 12%, it's 12%, isn't it? Like the person believes the existing truth, we don't know whether it's the truth. The existing statement is that it is 12%. So the mu is what? You see, 
0.12, the 12%. And the standard deviation is said to be what? X bar, the standard deviation? Three what? Just three, three percent. Which is 0 0.3, 0 0.03. Three percent is same as 0 0.03. This data we have collected is from question number three. So number one, can we begin by setting up the null hypothesis? Let's set up the null hypothesis. What is the null hypothesis from the question? The, the manager, is it the manager director? He believes that the, the annual return, okay? He believes that the, the average annual return on stock in the construction industry is 12%. That's the belief, which is there. So what is the null hypothesis? Anybody to set the null hypothesis? Faith, would you set for us the null hypothesis? Okay, so H naught is, oh, it's such that mu is equal to what? 0 0.12. This is what is there, alternative hypothesis. You can set an, an alternative hypothesis. Set an alternative hypothesis. Okay, mu is not equal to 0 0.12. Is that clear? Natasha, are you able to follow? Hello, are you able to follow? Okay. Yeah. So we have we have we have set the the hypothesis, right? So the next step from the hypothesis, we need the what? The second step, the test statistic. Statistic. That's the next step that we need, right? First, we set up the hypothesis. Then, from setting up the hypothesis, we need the test what? Testy statistic. <coughs> Madam Natasha, are you able to follow <coughs> with the friends? Can you hear us? Okay. Yeah, so, so that's what is there. Uh, now, listen on the test statistics. You pay attention to this one. This is very crucial. Number one, there are two common tests that we can use, common ones. Uh, we have the Z test and the, the T test, okay? So what you need to understand is that uh, you need to understand when do we use the Z and when do we use the, the T statistic. So the, the Z statistic, which is given as Z is equal to X bar minus mu, all over the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. This one, if we use it whenever the sample size, the sample size n is greater than what? 30, is at least 30. To be at least 30 simply means equal or greater than 30, greater or equal to 30. Is that clear? Natasha, you can always be confirming for us so that we don't leave you guys behind. <clears throat> okay. This is for the Z statistics. Then the T statistics, the T statistics is spelled like this. New, you know, the standard deviation all over the square root of N. We use the T statistics whenever the sample size is less than what? It's less than 30. Did you get that? <coughs> Hello. Like, hi, I'm talking to you now. Like, are you able to follow? Madam Leander, am I speaking so fast? Uh, okay, you are able to follow today? Yes, madam. This is statistics. We use it when the Sample size is at least 30, meaning 30 and above. 
Those are points to notice. They cannot tell you that use the C statistic, use the Z statistic. No. The question will not specify. Yourself, you should be able to detect. Is that clear? So now listen. Now we have seen that the, our sample size is at least 30. So we are going to use the what? The Z statistic. The S. This one. Yes. This one. The both the This is for the Z. We use this one because this one it follows the data that is symmetrically distributed, or that follows the standard normal distribution. So it's some, 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 it follows the larger population. You remember the properties of its metal? Yeah, as the sample size increases, then it, it, it draws closer and closer to the, right, to the true value, isn't it? That's consistent, isn't it? Remember those things, the consistency and bias, efficiency? Yes. Yes, so this one is for the standard, like uh, we get the standard deviation from the population, we call it the population because the sample size that is going, is going larger and larger. So, but for this one, it's the same thing. This is the standard, this is the standard deviation. Even this one is the standard deviation. We use this one AC to represent that the, the, the sample size is small. That's why you use small S, but it still is the standard deviation, right? The question is. No, no, no. There's no point like that. Okay. Okay. So now listen, how is it done? This is how it is done. So the first thing that we need to do is to actually to calculate for the Z value. Let's get it. Let's just compute the figures quickly, quickly. What's our, our, our new 0 0.10 0 minus C? 0 0.312 all over the standard deviation is 0 0.03 divided by the square root of yes after we are testing we are testing whether the claim we are testing the analysis claim right? we are going to test whether it's true or false this is the process of testing now okay it is a process of testing so I, I, I've shown you now, the first thing that we need to do is to calculate the, 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 the test statistic. It could be either a Z or a T statistic. So in this research, we are calculating a Z statistic. And what do you get on top? <laughs> like our calculators are on, we are able to solve because we are happy. What do you get on top? Zero point negative, of course. Negative what? No point. Negative zero point. It's negative zero point what? Negative zero point what? Friends, like this one, just the top one. Image 0 0.10 minus 0 0.12. Yes, it's negative what? What is the, the statistic? Negative four. Hope you have found the negative four. But you know the process of doing it. We are all fine. Hello. Okay. It has been said that the, the Z statistic is equal to negative what? Negative 4.00. I always told you that whenever you're calculating the Z value, this one, the Z score, it is always expressed in two, two decimal places, right? Negative 4 and negative 4.00. When you're done doing this, you need another what? Another Z statistic. There are two of them because we're going to compare them. That will be the process. You need another one. The other one, you don't suffer. You get it from the standard Z normal distribution table. You get it from the table, okay? I'll repeat. My reputation is <clears throat> when you're dealing with this one, when you're dealing with the, 
when you are dealing with a, the 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 crit z, we call it the critical z. You get it from the table. So after you have calculated for this one, the way how you have calculated for it, you need the you need the the critical z. Quite the critical z. Okay. You know that this data follows the normal distribution, right? There are two z values. There is always z critique here and another z critique. The other one is on the right or on the left because we told you that this data is symmetric, right? Meaning the right side is equal to the left side. You're following, right? Okay. If I'm not speaking so fast, I might be speaking so fast. Natasha and the friends online, am I speaking so fast? Hello, are you, are you able to hear? Oh, okay. Okay, don't worry, you, you'll be fine. So what you do, you don't type, okay? I'm very far from the gadget. So what you do is this, just open your mic, shout, then I'll hear you, yeah, from here. So don't, don't, don't feel shout, don't, don't just type. When I, whenever I ask you, turn on the mic and, and follow. Okay, people online have a question, they are saying that they are behind. But are you able to hear us now? As we are running it perfectly. <clears throat> okay, so we said that the, in the process of testing for now, I put, uh, for when you're testing for hypothesis, uh, the first thing that you do is to set the, the now and the alternative hypothesis. So we had already set our now hypothesis, and I said that our now hypothesis was such that new was equal to what 0 0.12. There, thereby the alternative hypothesis became the opposite of what of the now hypothesis. So we say that see, the alternative hypothesis shall be that new will be not equal to what 0 0.12. Okay. Are you able to follow now? Yes, sir. Hello? Yeah. Are, you, are those words not inverted? Like what we are writing, is it, is it not inverted? Like, are you able to read what you are writing clearly straight? Uh, yes. From the right hand side, yes, I'm following just with the figures. Though my network is breaking. Oh, okay, don't worry, we are, we are even recording the class. So I was saying the first thing that you do is set the now hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So we have set the now, we have set the alternative. The following thing is to test, uh, to set the test statistic. Then on the test statistic, there are basically two of them. The first one is the, the Z statistic and the other one is the T statistic. With this one that we have calculated is the Z statistic. You only use it when the sample size is at least 30, meaning it's 30 and above. So this is how we're calculating. We're just basically getting the, what, the figures that we, had, uh, that we had extracted. So we found that the mean from the sample was 0 0.1, that was 10%, minus 0 0.1 to the mean from, from the, the existing claim, divided by the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size at six. And we found the negative four, 0 0.00 as the z value. Is that clear now? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Then we can we can move together from here. So I was saying that from here, what you do is to calculate, is to go to the table and get another z value, which we call the critical z. If you have observed what I've written here from this board, there is there is a number that should be here, right? And some number that should be here. There are two numbers that you said from the normal distribution that you did. There are always some number here. This one is always negative. If it is this side, it will be positive, right? So how do we find this Z critique? We call it the critical Z. We go back to our table. 
But uh, we don't just go to the table anyhow. We are usually guided how to go to the table. And this is how we go to the table. We look for the significance level. The significance level. Somebody doesn't know what the significance level is. We know the confidence level, right? The confidence level is given in the question. They, they say, okay, if the confidence level is 95%, then basically the significance level will be 100 minus 95, which shall be 5%. But in this question, they specified that the significance level was what? 5%, which is same as 0 0.05. So alpha shall be 0 0.005. So what you do from here, since this data is double-tailed, right? When you, how do you test the first? How do you determine this is double-tailed or single-tailed? You take the mean, right? The, 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 the alternative hypothesis. If in the alternative hypothesis, I thought you're speaking so far. If in the alternative hypothesis, you've said that mu is not equal, it means that if it is not equal, it can either fall on the right or on the left. Therefore, the data follows the normal distribution. You're following that, right? It has got the right tail and the left tail. But if in the mu, the mu, like this one, you say maybe it's less than, it means that the data is distributed to the left. If it says that the mu is greater than, it means your data is just distributed to the right, it's not double tail. So since this one is a double tail, it has the left and the right side, you divide this alpha by what? By two. What do you get when you divide this, this number, 0 0.05 by two? Natasha, what do you get? Okay, 0 0.025. Two five zero. Are we able to follow? Yes, madam. Sorry. Okay. A very good question. Very excellent question. How do you tell this is a double tail or a single tail? Because we only divide this if it is a double tail. If it's a single tail, we don't divide. So how you tell? You just go back to your what? So your now hypothesis your alternative hypothesis. If your alternative hypothesis says it, mu is not equal, meaning if it is not equal, it can either be greater or less. That is double tail. There is no question about it. You got it? But, mm -hmm. yes, this part is the one that tells us that whether it is the right tail or double tail. So you listen to the question when you are reading. We we'll have another one for single tail. I think that will be one of the examples. So don't worry, you, you will see. Okay? Yeah. So as as it stands, let's concentrate on this one. Are we fine? Hello. And so we have found this area. Okay. We have found our area. What you do now, so that you go to that table, for you to do the right thing, you have to say one minus e this number that you have found, okay? This number that you have found, why should you subtract it from one? That is the question. Because the table that you are using, it gives you all the area from here up to here, isn't it? We are using the full table, the, the one that gives you, the, the cumulative standard distribution table. It gives you all the area from here up to this Z value. So that's why, since we know that the total area under this table is what? It's one. You subtract that from one. And what do you get? 0 0.9750. Okay, so this area, are we fine up to this area? Because we are reaching to the answer. If you are reaching here, we are reaching to the answer. Are we fine on how we find this one? Anybody with a question? This is just the first one. The second example will be faster because we'll be repeating the same thing. Are we fine? If you understand this one, then we are safe. Are we okay? Dulu, you are fine? Okay. Natasha and the friends, are you okay? Are you able to follow us? Okay. Thank you. So now, what you do from here? You go back to that table of ours. Okay. Let's go to that table and look for that number. We are going to look for that number. And the, the star will do it fine. Uh, we, we will do it better. 
So I'll, I'm going to display these numbers for you. Are they the ones? These tables that I'm distributing in one Oh. Okay. Here is the table. Are you able to see the table? But you can't see the numbers, isn't it? But you, you know your table in your notes, you can even follow, right? If you can't see mine, then you can follow. Okay. Okay. Are you able to see these numbers? Are you able to see them? We are looking for that nine zero point three nine seven five zero. We want you to locate it. Okay. Which line is it? It's in one point six, isn't it? One point nine, right? Eh? One point nine. Have you checked in the line for one point nine? Check from that 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 table. That's the standard and normal table. Like it has got the numbers, right? There is a Z, this part that has got Z, then this part has that has got two decimal at these places, right? So this part that goes down here, where there is 1.9, have you seen it? Then it moves straight to the right. Are you able to locate it? Yes. So that's when you go, you go, you, you will find this thing, guys. It is somewhere here, 0 0.9750. What you do, number one, you, go, you come to the left, you check the number that is here. Did you get it? Yes. Check for the number that is here. It's one point nine. Okay. Then you go upward. Okay. Upward and get the, the two decimal places that are up. It's zero point what? Eh? Zero point zero six, isn't it? Then you add them together and get the, the z value that is one point nine six. The absolute value. Did you get it? Hello. Are we finding yes, uh, my network is find it? So you're, you're unable to find it. Uh, madam, you have a question? You're, you have a question from online. My and network think, uh, just broke, so I, I can't. Yes. I'm a bit behind. Okay. Okay. I'm let's let's do this. This class has been. Break. Yeah, I, I'm sure the breaking is coming from your end. It should be from your end. You have network challenge. Because here our network is very perfect. Very good. Okay. Let's let's do this. The class is being recorded. Immediately after class, we will send you the recording of the class. And I, I, I'm sure I can easily follow. I don't know how that, how that works. I don't know if that is fair, fair judgment. Is it a fair judgment, unfair? Hello. Okay, thank you, sir. It's okay. Yes, it's I'll, I'm going to send actually, Yes, you'll be, you'll be able to follow actually. Thank you so much. You can still follow and catch one or two things. Thank you. Yeah, so this is how you find this number. Are we okay now? Are we finding it, Sarah, how you find this number? This number, this number now, this one, is called the, it's an absolute critical value. The critical value is neither negative or positive. Did you get that one? It's an absolute value. It's, a, it's always positive, never like, like it can be negative or positive. Thank you. That's what I wanted to mean. It can be either negative or positive. You follow it, right? You saw what you do. The critical this is there are two of them. This side you put it negative 1.96. This side you put it as a what? As a positive number. Are you following, right? Eh? Yes, madam. Uh, it's not really mandatory, but that's the easiest way of visualizing. Because sometimes as a beginner, you can be mixing up things. But when you just reach there, when you get there, 
when you get there, it's easy. You can even do it without. But it's, believe me, it's really challenging somehow to do it without visualizing. So that's why I advise you don't lose much by doing this. You can easily just so that you, as you are still learning. Then when you get fine, then you can easily move. Right? Is that fair? Okay. And so, so what you're going to do from here is to do what? What I'm going to do is to write these values now. This is how we make conclusion. This is how we make conclusion. And this is how we conclude. If the value that we have found, that one, they calculated, you remember they calculated the value, right? If it falls on this side, this one, uh, so, I can erase so that you can see clearly. Because we're not seeing anything. And we are very behind. Is that true? Is the star lying? Is the star lying that we're very behind? Are we behind? Rejection what? Eh? This one is said to be the rejection region. Similar, this side is called the what? Eh? The rejection region. This one is the fail to reject region, also known as the acceptance region. So, what you do, you look at the, that Z value which you calculated. It was Z is equal to negative what? Eh? Negative four. Then you come, treat this as a number line, okay? Treat this as a number line. Where will negative four be? It will be somewhere here, isn't it? Hello? Like you are moving like this on the number line. Yes. Negative four is somewhere, somewhere here, which means it's in the what? It's in the rejection region. Therefore, you reject the what? The now hypothesis. What was the now hypothesis? That the mu is equal to 12%. Is that clear? And you're done. How do you write now? I was seeing the eyes were asking that question. And so I was able to read the question you're asking in your eyes. Like uh, the evaluation? Like positive four? The calculated one? Yes, it was going to be this side again. You would still reject it. Uh -huh. Unless it was somewhere here, maybe one somewhere here, it would have fallen in the in the acceptance region. Then you could have failed to reject it. And now hypothesis. You got it? That sounds fair. Lulu, okay. Oh, this is Lulu. Even this one is Lulu. Okay. So that's how it is. So how do you write now? How you make your conclusion after calculating like this? Okay. After doing the calculation, you say conclusion now. Since the what? See? The critical. The critical Z statistic. Statistic, which is what see? one point nine six or oh, in this respect negative one point nine six is it? Is it greater than the calculated? The calculated what see? Z statistic. Which is what? Eh? Negative four. You, you know what it means, right? Eh? That negative, the, this number is greater than this one. You know how a, mom, a number line moves, right? Eh? What is greater is what is on the line, on the right side. Eh? So you, you do what? You, you reject the what? Eh? Reject eh? the now what? Eh? The now hypothesis. Or if you want, you can say, since they calculated this, this statistic, which is negative four, is less than. It's the reference of this, isn't it? Yes. It's less than it, the the critical Z statistic negative one point nine six. We do what we reject the now hypothesis. Are you okay? Are you fine now? Hello. Hi. Hey, you're not talking. Are you upset with me? Am I speaking so fast so that you're not understanding what I'm saying? Yes? Hello? Somebody saying, yeah? Lulu? Yes. Why, why are you not understanding? 
Yes. Actually, it didn't explode. It just got from yes. the cable. <laughs> the cable. Yes. Now, why was it taking the enough? Okay, it's because this cycle, this is valid, the critical, we call it the critical, the one that we get from the table. It's on this side, like you try just to compare the one that you have calculated with this one, it says, I. So you know that you always, if the number that you have calculated falls in this region, you reject the now hypothesis, because this is the rejection region, right? Then now that your negative four falls in this region, which is a rejection region, that's why you reject the now hypothesis. If your your maybe your calculated z value was somewhere maybe here one, right? Could have been negative one here, right? Maybe negative one. You could have failed to reject the now hypothesis because this is in the acceptance region. You failed to reject it. You got it? Did you get it? Yes. Okay. Any other question? Madam Kapo, do you have a question? You okay? Faith, you're fine. Memory. Oh, okay. And the let's go to the next question. I think the are the next one will move faster because because of what? Because the, it will be the repetition. It will be basically the reputation of this. Okay, I have understood. Yeah, so we can go to the next one. The next one will be the reputation of uh, this story. Uh, the next one will be the reputation of that. How do you do the reputation? Yes, from the lecture, the last lecture five, the last question, there are questions down, right? Yes, madam. Okay, question number four. It reads, is that our a official at a busy border post claims that, or border post claims that it takes on average at most two days for a truck driver to clear his consignment. Are you following the question? On average, at most two days. You suspect that the average is greater than what? Two days. You're following that, right? So you want to test the claim. Set the now hypothesis and then set the alternative hypothesis. That is the question, guys. Very easy, right? Did you get it? On a border post, I, on a border post, there is that guy on a border post. He believes that he, on average, meaning the mean, right? We know that average means the mean, isn't it? The mean is that at most, which means mu is at most, see, two. What does the word at most mean? What did I teach? Oh. Less or equal to, isn't it? At most means less or equal to, right? Then at least means greater or pro equal to. So, H, H not shall be what? What's about H not? Yes. He's reaching my, my guide. Okay. So you can H not is such that mu is less or equal to what to two, right? You're following that, right? Eh? It's less than that. Then your alternative hypothesis shall be what? Mu shall be such that it will be greater or equal to what? To two. Like it's less than that. So now, what do we do generally? This is what you should learn. We do not get the test statistics in the critical point. Therefore, you will not say less or equal to. 
instead you just stay there. Because if you get exactly there, it will give you zero. And you don't have the area zero on those table. You got it. You did it. I'm saying that. Where there is less or equal to, you can just say less. You get it, right? So that it can be sharp to the right or sharp to the left. Not equal. Because if you say equal to, you mean that it can be equal to two in fact. But uh, that will not be really be like you want the opposite because check hello this includes the two right even your alternative hypothesis includes the two what if this one says two and you you get the two you get confused so what you do you 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 introduce a sharp relationship very sharp you got that ma he didn't. So I mean here, where if you say it's less or equal, to just say less so that you don't include this value. Even for this one, just say greater. So your mu, your alternative hypothesis is greater than what? Greater than two. Sorry. Don't say greater or less or equal to, because you don't get the critical values like on, on, on these values here, this one. They should be different. Yet it should be totally opposite of what you're saying. Not that the relationship is weak. You're strengthening the relationship. You got that? Got it? Any question? We're done with this one. Let me the questions are easy. Face. With this one. Sorry? Yes, we have stated the now hypothesis. It is said that the H naught is always the now hypothesis, right? If you want to be more smart, you can say, let, let H naught be what? Now hypothesis, H A be alternative hypothesis. Then you write like this. A person who understands the statistics will know what you mean. Another question? Hello? You guys are not. I will follow. Yes, sir, we are following. You can move on. Right? Is that a question? Okay. Question number five. Question number five. A long, a, a, an, ice, an ice cream vending machine is said to dispense 100 grams per cup. Okay. Meaning, pick up on average, it dispenses 100 grams. You suspect that the machine is under filling the what? The cup. Can you set up the now and alternative hypothesis to investigate this case? This is set up. Can we write this on the now hypothesis? The ice cream machine is said to dispense 100 grams, meaning the mu is equal to what? It's equal to 100 grams, right? Yes. That is an average. That is it's an average. Mm -hmm. Am I getting your question? Oh, average. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But this one is. Okay. Okay. So, in, in short, you're saying for this one, we can't manage to find? We can manage. Oh, okay. So, what is there? Yeah, thank you very much. It's not always that, uh, you know, this is just language. It, it, yeah, of course, mostly we use mean or average. Those are common words that are used. But here, when you look at this, 
They're saying that 100 grams per cup, meaning on average, every cup gives us what? Gives us that already. That should tell us that that is the mean. Because that's average. On average, it gives us. You know, pe, 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 pe means we divide by, right? Yes, madam. Exactly. Find the now first. That's when you can find out something. Yes, find the now first. You're fine? Okay. So you can write? What's our now hypothesis? You can write your now, right? What's an alternative? You know how it's right in one way of being right. Yes. Um, per cup. You are, yeah, per handle. Yes. 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 No, like I'm not refusing. That's the, that's the right thinking. We mean for for the first one, it is believed that it is equal, right? But for the for the next one, they're saying that you believe that it's less. So then our alternative hypothesis shall be less than what? Less than 100. Because the, we, we, are, we are believing that it's, it's, it's something that is less than, less than what is believed, okay? If we say overfilling, overfilling, maybe if you already know these things and you are asking. A long distance bus conductor, yes, madam. Is equal to then the other one shall shall be less. Than. Yes. Mu is mu is less than hundred. Less than hundred. Yeah, yeah. Because the alternative hypothesis is 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 is, is, is one side, right? Yes, the alternative. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean, right? Eh? Like the alternative hypothesis is single cell. When you say it is just distributed to the left or to the right, that's what it means. You got that? Hello. A long distance bus conductor claims that at least, are you following? Yes, he claims that at least 5% of passengers buy some bananas to eat before reaching their destination. Are you following, guys? Eh? At least. Okay, at least. If 18 out of um, a random sample of 60 passengers bought bananas during what? During their trip with the bus, is the conductor right using 5% level of significance? What test is this? Is this a Z statistic or a T statistic or a proportional? Okay. What helps you to say is Z? Okay, N is 60, then? Anything. Our mu is what? Zero point two five. Okay, naga x bar. All right. So this question comes under proportions, right? 
is proportion. These are percentages, okay? These are proportions. You can see that eh, the first claim is that eh, the first proportion, the P naught, P naught is equal to what? Eh? 0 0.25, right? Then, eh, <clears throat> are you following, right? Eh? Then the other P, remember the other P, the other proportion that you get from the sample now. That one, the, the one that we we're dealing with was for means, right? There was the mean from the population and the mean from the sample, right? This one, you have the population, uh, the proportion that you find in the claim and the proportion that you calculate, which you get from the more like the sample. Are you following, right? So the population from the sample in this case shall be 18 out of what? Out of 60 times 100. Do you get that right? So what are you going to do? This is what you're going to do. But that remain is in question number 60 and 7, the last two questions. To enhance, even uh, because we can, uh, what's this? 9 to uh, from 6. Okay, even the question number 7 as well is from, from proportion. Let me not introduce something very new. Indeed, proportion, right? Yes. You didn't? The lecture has kept. No. All right. He, he hasn't seen? Oh, but he's still going to finish. Oh, so there's still some more. Not. I'm sure he, he's going to do proportions. Uh -huh. So we're going to do it, right? but, uh, but not today. What's this doing? But we, even tomorrow we are meeting, didn't we agree that? Eh? Just the two questions, like even tomorrow we are meeting, didn't we agree that? Didn't we agree that we are meeting today, tomorrow, and this Sunday? Wasn't that an agreement? But, but, but obviously the classes get, get recorded, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I don't need to find it. I... What, how many minutes have remained? First, my first. 30 minutes. It's a lot of time, eh? We can just do some commercial break, then we do, right? Uh, okay. Mm, yeah. We can do a question from C, but let, let's, let's do the proportion. We'll do also a question from C, right? We have not done C. I just talked about it, but we didn't do it, isn't it? Which one are we going? Which one is the direct? Proportion. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's an assignment. Which one? Oh, okay. Due information break. What, what, what cost is that? Business environment. And what? Easy. You already know that. <laughs> okay. This is how you write the notes. Okay. Let me teach you how to write essays, right? During commercial break, then I will teach you proportion so that I forget about this. I want to forget about it. You know, during proportion, you can just pause the recording so that the time is not so long. <laughs> 